there are a lot of fantastic camera options out there to choose from when considering your first camera. In this video, I'm sharing why I think the GH4 is a stellar choice and how you can even level it up. I'm Danny Rubio, one of the team members here at Online Creator Studios. We're a collective of creators sharing things we know so you can be a better creator one piece of content at a time. Look, the Panasonic GH4 is a six-year-old camera, and that's great. Allow me to explain. When you're first starting out, one of the biggest struggles that most creators face is deciding what camera they should get. This ends up leading people through endless amount of YouTube rabbit holes that leaves them in two places. Either never getting a camera or spending way too much for your first camera that you're not even remotely sure how to use as effectively as you could. Why spend 90% of your budget on a camera when there are other things you can spend your money on instead that will in turn last longer? More on that later. Now, this brings me to why the GG4 is worth it. The price. Let's assume your budget is $2,000, which is a solid budget for, your, for some cameras out there on the market right now, but that's usually for just the camera body. You can find a good use GH4 anywhere from $400 to $600 on eBay, and sometimes even cheaper in other places. You might be thinking you wanna get a Canon or Sony camera. That's understandable, but right now, don't worry about the camera brands. Let's say you find a deal with a GH4, and it comes with a Panasonic 25 millimeter, and some kit lens that they've never used for $550. You're now left with $1,450 to spend on other things. Look, it's a six-year-old camera, but Lumix did a fantastic job with it because it was one of the first, if not the first camera to introduce 4K recording, as well as some great slow-mo options, plus there are a lot of great lenses. So let's break down some of the things that the GH4 shines in. It's small and compact, has great audio preamps, it has a 16 megapixel sensor, has ISO from 2000 to 25,600, it's a micro four thirds mount, has a three inch fully articulating screen, an electronic viewfinder, 12 frames per second continuous shooting, 4K video resolution, built in wireless, lightweight, weather shield body, focus peaking, headphone jack, great battery life, and good, pretty good dynamic range for a micro four thirds system. Now here's some cons. It's a micro four thirds system, so it's not gonna be great, and this is for all the haters out there. There's no in-body image stabilization, no support for UHS-2 memory card. It has one card slot. Now, some might say that's a deal breaker, but for beginners, I don't think you should worry about it. There's no support for the Lumix XLR adapter, but really, that's it. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty great pros list. You're goddamn right. The following suggestions are for any base camera, because really, any camera, if used properly with lighting and audio equipment, which are more important than the actual camera you're using, will always outperform a better camera used poorly. The Micro Four Thirds system does struggle in low light, but if you, if you got a prime lens like a 25 millimeter or a 14 millimeter that are usually from a f1.5 to a f2.5, you're gonna do just fine. You could also get a U speed booster adapter in a Sigma or Canon EF lens. The other places you'd wanna put your money is in, is in light and audio. You could purchase a Godox SL60W or a newer 2-point LED light kit from Amazon. Really, anything is better than no light. The audio options I'd suggest are either the Rode Video Micro, because it provides great audio quality for a small size and affordable price, or the Zoom F1 Field Recorder, because it's a super versatile audio recorder. You can use it as a library layer and record independently, or a shotgun microphone and record to the camera. But it suffers from good battery performance. But really, that's a small trade-off for all the great audio you get out of it. In fact, this whole video has been recorded using the F1 on the GH5. The thing is, the amount of gear that was once the top of the line is now even more accessible than ever. Taking the time to get one and to learn to use it, including their, including their limitations, will inevitably make you a better creator and storyteller. Because at the end of the day, it's never about the gear, it's about the craft. So if you like this video, so if you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification for our next video. Until next time, get out there and make something with the gear you have.